well, welcome to Shedlock 2000's YouTube channel on the Defender L663 again. Um, without repeating my oft used but not very accurate <laughs> phrase, uh, this is only a short and is this video here, but I've just come out here, I've, I've come out somewhere pretty for to show you. Well, say pretty. Pretty is not the right word I'd use, but I've come out here because you you won't be able to see. I'm sure your video will take you a bit of a video. In fact, I'll cut to it now. Um, uh, of the uh, of the old man river, but there's another name for it, uh, an indigenous name, and I can't just think of what that is. But anyway, I'll, I'll look it up and I'll put it down here somewhere so you'll see it flash across the the thing or sat in the corner somewhere. Um, and uh, and it's quite interesting because the 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 river really does cut a big hole out of out of the ground here and then the ground's very slumpy it's like a sort of a weird silty kind of material and so it, it wears away quite quickly and you end up with these very peculiar slumps they call coolies where the river's gone into and it has a very specific sort of riparian valley environment like ecological environment it's quite quite fragile really and so consequently they do a lot of sort of uh, maintenance of it here and it's sort of quite uh, separated you can't really get you can only get down to it in a few places water is very um, <laughs> he says water is very hard to find here but we actually live this is a, a semi-arid desert the area is classed as a semi-arid desert uh, and it's because we receive less than 10 centimetres of rain in an entire year, precipitation in an entire year. Even our snow's very dry, it's not like the wet stuff we have in England. It's sort of a light fluffy thing and when you make a snowboard you can't actually... You sort of scoop up a bunch of snow and you yam it together and it just you let go of it and it all falls down as, as powdery snow. It's very, very dry. Um, and so we live in this semi-arid desert and there's lots of, in this ground here, you won't be able to see because you won't... I can't show you closely, but there's lots of little baby cacti and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and so the water requirements for the for the whole area are very well protected uh, because there's not enough there's not enough water to feed these massive amounts of ground. You know, obviously you saw in one of my videos I took the drone up and took massive amount of footage of this. It's just millions of millions of acres and out. Um, but they manage it with, with water and, and with lots of irrigation they can grow some crops and look after the, the cattle and all that kind of stuff but that requires huge amounts of water because the evaporative process is, is intense um, and so the, the rivers and the associated streams and, and reservoirs that they've created are very carefully protected you know to avoid that sort of stuff anyway that's enough about that I mean it'll be quite interesting I suppose when, when I show you the video hopefully yeah hopefully anyway um but what i've come here to tell you today and talk to you about is about oil engine oil now you'll have seen from my videos i've done two videos on changing your engine oil one the easy way which is the the, the sort of uh, extraction method the suck out method and then one the more complicated way which is dropping all the belly plates and all that kind of stuff now that's a lot more complicated than the other um and uh, and so uh I've done my oil three times. I've got what have I got? Nineteen thousand seven hundred miles, seven hundred and something miles. Nineteen thousand seven hundred miles, we'll call it, and uh, and that's lots of that's lots of miles. Uh, and so I've changed my oil three times now. Once at five thousand, well, just over five thousand. Once at ten thousand, bang on, and then once at uh, seventeen thousand because. I had a lot of running up and up to Edmonton to fit in in a in one particular weekend I had off and it had to be that weekend but I couldn't drive up there and change my oil at the same time if you see what I mean so it ended up being following weekend any road so I sent from the oil that I dropped the last time I sent it up to the Agat laboratories in Cal in Calgary uh, and the reason for that was twofold firstly the oil that I pulled out on the first oil chain at 5,000 mile was was very black it was quite dark um uh very black and, and and didn't look good to me at all uh and i just assumed that that was a bedding in process and and all the rest of it and then the second oil that i changed at ten thousand, that wasn't very good either that was black too there we go that went relatively well um, 
And then I thought to myself, well, I'm a big proponent of changing the oil at 5,000 miles. And the service intervals on the P400 are meant to be 21,000 miles. And, and a number of people have been asking me about whether they think they can let it, you know, long drain oils and higher quality performance oils and all these sorts of things, which should technically sort of drag out that kind of uh, service interval. And, and, and the theory behind it is the oil's good enough to cope with those long drain service intervals. Uh, and a lot of folk have said, well, oil's better now, why are you changing? Waste of oil, no, 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 you know, usual kind of um, uh, soap boxing. Uh, and so I thought what I'd do is I would come here and uh, we'd have this bit of a view here and then I'd talk to you about the uh, oil uh, testing that I had done, the oil samples and the analysis that I had done on the Land Rover. And then we'll see what the story is now. Bearing in mind that this, uh, this oil has done, it hasn't done 17,000 miles, the car's done 17,000 miles when I dropped the oil. Uh, sorry, yeah, 17,000 miles when I dropped the oil. And I put it in at 10,000, so it did very, very nearly 7,000 miles. It was 6,790 or some such miles, 7,000 miles. Um, and I've had the results back, and the results are quite interesting. Now, it's a very sort of a not, not a very nicely provide. I mean, it's great in a PDF, but I can't stitch the PDF into where I normally fit it because you'll not see the little number. So I'm going to try and put them here uh, in a long thing so you can see, but it, it, it may not work out just because I don't have the best video editing equipment as, as I do. So I'm sort of limited to what functionality I can get out of it. Anyway, I'll try and put them down here, but. Uh, this analysis is on the genuine Land Rover uh, Castrol engine and engine oil, which is 020s. Castrol Edge Professional, which is the Jaguar Land, Ro Jaguar Land Rover recommended oil from Jaguar Land Rover. It's replaced with a Jaguar Land Rover filter uh, and, uh, and the air filters and everything else. I do all the things at the same time. So air filter and oil filter. I don't change the fuel filter because that's in the tank these days so you can't actually bung one of those in unless you pull it all out so engine oil and air filter have all been replaced at the same time and that's interesting i mentioned the air filter because that's interesting now the results of the oil are this you'll notice that within normal parameters are aluminium and chromium copper iron's a little high iron's getting up there um uh, the uh, there's uh, tin uh, lead figures are very low uh, but you'll see on the thing, hopefully, if it's down here, you'll see that silicon levels, the SI levels, are at 29. And that's on the upper reportable limit. And then as you follow through molybdenum, which is also a little high, and then low nickel, no silver, no potassium, or very little potassium, very little sodium, uh, boron, which is acceptable. Calcium, which is also a little high, but nothing, you know, nothing to get worried about. Magnesium, manganese, phosphorus, and zinc. You can see here that the oil degradation figures are actually quite good. Zero soot, a little bit of oxidization, but nothing to worry about. There's a lot of NO, uh, there's a lot of uh, NO uh, uh, nitrogen oxide content and carbon oxide, carbon dioxide content, and so on and so forth. Um, not not massive, not worrying, not at those high levels, but up there. And you'll notice as well, this is going to be hard for me to sort of trim these out, but I'll try. But the wear control chart demonstrates that it's is actually not in a terrible sort of condition if that makes sense but it is starting to wear and it's starting to wear only 7,000 miles now the other thing that they've drawn out here and it's not on this chart which is a bit odd and I'm not quite certain why why it's not odd but uh, why it's not on but um, the titanium ingress uh, is quite high as well and so they've flagged the result that there's a lot of titanium in the in the oil and that's probably a function of the my thanks to Cameron for this actually um, one of the top bananas on the Facebook group uh, who follows the, the videos as well shout out to the man who drove the series 3 across Africa top banana my kind of person um, anyway uh, Cameron uh, has identified and well he's reminded me I, I, I sort of knew this but um, not having been dealing with diesel engines or engines in general for 
25 years since I was a diesel engineer but anyway uh, since then I've sort of forgotten the dramas and the silicon content which is at the upper if you notice uh, on the on the chart it says 29 and it's at the upper re reportable limit which means that it, the oil is as has as much silicon in as they would think is is uh, advisable and uh, it's advised me to they're telling me that there's it's worth reporting because there's something worrying about it and the same is true of the titanium now titanium uh, is likely from the supercharger or maybe the main end bearings the main bearings and i'm not quite sure what they made out of here i, I don't really know um and so uh they may the bearings sometimes do contain titanium and sometimes not i mean they might be bronze or some fancy uh some fancy technological stuff that they use now um but the silicon uh, the silicon comes from the dust in the air, little particles of sand and silicon that comes from dust. Now, this is relevant because um, this oil change was over winter. We're in May now, and I changed it. When did I change it here? I've got the date on it. Um, oh, right, yeah, so the 20, 21st of the 4th, so April. Uh, middle of April I changed it. So the, it did the 7,000 miles over winter. And one of the things you will notice about winter is that it's not known for being hot and dusty. It's known for being damp and wet and, and icy. So, I haven't had the previous oils changed, but it indicates to me that uh, the air filters are not doing a very good job of filtering the silicon out, or, uh, because they're brand new air filters, so it's not a, it's not a process of, of that. Or there's a split in the hose, which I've checked and there isn't. Um, it may it, it may demonstrate that the Land Rover I've got the raised air intake here, but it does show that there may be some merit in a pre-filter somewhere in the system from the air intake, and having the raised air intake demonstrates that it's sort of not collecting the dust from the gravel roads and stuff because it, because it's up. That's the point of a raised air intake is to reduce your dust level in particulates into the engine. But as you can see from this report, well, this report, he says I'm pointing at this because it's on big thing, but you can see from this report that the the silicon content is quite high. So we have an issue here with, uh, with three things. One, it's clear that the oil needs changing because the silicon content is quite high. Two, there's a problem with why the silicon content is quite high after only after only 7,000 miles and 7,000 miles at winter when there's not a lot of dust kicking about. And three, is there some sort of difficulty with, uh, is there some sort of requirement for a pre-filter or, or whatever? Now, now I have just mentioned that we live in a semi-arid desert and normally during the summer we do get quite a lot of dust here and we do get quite a lot of dust on, off the gravel roads in particular because gravel roads um he said, oh, no, you won't see this but i'm pointing at one here because of where i've come here is is off a gravel road so um the results basically are that my worries of of carbon suspension or soot are actually negligible because it doesn't appear that there is much um the color of the oil which i'll i'll put up here um like that um, uh, the colour of the oil is very black which sort of indicates one or two things either it's burned uh, or it's got a lot of carbon in it and seeing as it doesn't have a lot of carbon in it it looks like it might be getting burned uh, it doesn't smell burned uh, and the engine oil doesn't appear to have been over hot and, and of course it's got all sorts of oil coolers and, and whatever on this so it, it doesn't seem like that's actually a thing that's going to happen uh, but nevertheless it's black and it's black for, for whatever reason so uh, the sort of content's not not something that's worrying um, I, there, uh, like I said there's a, there's a bit of gas uh, gas suspension in there the, um, uh, the nitrogen oxide and the carbon dioxide and, and other sorts of things sulfur oxide uh, and there is some oxidization of the oil 18% oxidization and it shows here on the wear control chart which I'll try to squeeze in if I can um, that the the sample is like it's, it's it's on its way down I mean the wear itself would indicate that it would last a lot longer and assuming that five thousand assuming that seven thousand miles is one uh seven fourteen twenty one one third isn't it that basically shows us that the oil's not really worn out but there are concerns about 
stuff that's left in the engine you know these particulates that you find in the engine and and if nothing else it warrants that there's there's uh an oil change in virtue of the of the color of the oil the the oxidization content being relatively high and of the ingress of these other these other particulars so that tells us more about how the engine's performing as well so the the fact that there's titanium in here indicates to me that there's some uh, component wear, some bearing wear or turbocharger uh, bearing or fan blade wear and that particulate is suspended in there and that is reducing the performance of the engine or something regardless of whether it's worn out the particulates in there are, are likely to be abrasive and, and, and may damage further or m more uh, sub significantly the the components within the engine so uh, and it shows that there's you know a potential issue with the filtration uh, that is the air filtration for the for the you know the silicon in, uh, silicon content of the oil so that's interesting uh, so my advice remains the same if you own one of these vehicles p400 whatever engine has got in it the 21,000 miles to me is not sufficient it's it's far it's excessive in fact uh and so in order to protect your land rover engine and, and here's the problem is that you don't do it's, it's very unlikely if you've got this car that these long drain oils will affect you they won't affect you because by the time you sold it in four or six or eight years time whatever the engine will be fine the problem is the person that buys it next and and how you want to leave it to them do you want to be that man or that person who who sends your car out knowing that the next person that wants that buys it is going to uh, encounter the 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 difficulties associated with long drain oils which are premature bearing failure internal component wear uh, reduced performance reduced fuel economy and on and on and on and on and all these things go do you want to be that person and i, I don't because people then go off and say oh land rover engines they're rubbish they, they break down and they might have new timing chain guides or whatever but that's an oil thing it's because the oils haven't been changed quickly enough it's an, it's oil wear it's premature wear uh, and it can be avoided and it can be avoided by throwing 150 dollars worth of engine oil it's not a lot of money engines are expensive and oil's cheap <laughs> so i'll change the engine oil i bought an l322 i bought it at 100 and something thousand miles and and uh, by the time i got to it the damage was done nobody ever changed the 100,000 kilometers sorry nobody ever changed the transmission engine oil uh, transmission oil and as a, as a consequence, it, the, the six-speed transmission was struggling. It was under pressure, and, and as I've, as I've <laughs> no idea what that's all about. And as I've, why would I try and record a video at all? Um, and as reported before, you know those that six-speed uh, transmission was known uh, to require intervals of, of oil change at seventy-five thousand miles. That's what ZF recommends. Land Rover ignored it. It's not part of their service interval, and as a result, at hundred thousand, hundred and twenty thousand mile, there was degradation of the of the of the valve bodies inside the, and the seals, the O-ring seals, that caused the, the shudder in the gearbox and premature gearbox fail. And I had to put up with it because Land Rover had told their owner that it didn't need doing, but it does need doing. Um, and so here we find ourselves so uh i like changes at uh 5, miles engine oil uh, engine oil filter and air filter uh i like them because it protects the engine and it protects the reputation of land rover and it protects the new owner when whoever buys fin so uh you know these things are these things are important and i recommend that you do them anyway that's basically all i've got to tell you today i mean it's just a, a brief analysis of this engine oil thing that I've, I've got going on and hopefully it's been useful to you because a lot of people have, have asked why would i bother changing the oil so frequently and on the on the forums people are saying you know is twenty one thousand miles uh okay and the answer is no it's not okay and, and here's the proof the proofs in in the in the pudding as it were uh thank you very much for tuning in it's been great to have you uh listening in again i always appreciate the comments and the feedbacks and We've got this lovely little community going and i appreciate everybody for their part in it uh well and with that it's good night from me and it's good night from finn cheerio